one on this computer. Cool, stop share. There we go. Okay, back with me. Um, let's go to screen share again and we'll get into it, eh, guys? So that video, I will provide it to you. There's no uh, problems there. Uh, it was a really good uh, video on um, getting regulars, which was designed to follow up, I suppose, a little bit on the conversation that uh, National Office had on their online um, meeting. They had their masterclass. They were talking very much about gaining clients over, over a period which we're coming into, which is obviously lower on leads, yeah? So uh, that was to follow on with that a little bit, work out how to get regulars, uh, but I can, I'll can talk you through it a little bit, and then if you want to watch the video, we'll include that in the uh, the next newsletter or the next thing we send out to you on bulk. Cool, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, uh, make sure you're on mute. We'll try to have a look at um, uh, the comments coming through as they come through, um, and we'll try and admit people as they come in through as well. Okay, excellent. Cool, so let's get into it. Um, okay, housekeeping, make sure you're on mute. Um, if you've got any questions or anything like that, hopefully we'll get to them, chuck them in the uh, the chat bar, so you can see my chat bar up there. I'm not too sure what it looks on your computer. Uh, Richard will try and keep a bit of an eye on that, and at the end I'll refer to him and hopefully he can um, uh, tell me if there's anything in there we, we should address or whether we do it uh, offline tomorrow. You can always, of course, uh, email us the next day with the questions, and that happened a fair bit after the last meeting as well. We got a lot of questions afterwards, which was good. So it was a busy day the next day for us just answering some questions. So feel free to do that as well. So uh, leading on from Leeds, yeah, um, this now is our current time of the year probably that's going to be a dip. It does tend to dip a little bit more into April, but let's face it, we're already already in April. Uh, but it looks like we're probably going to have uh, probably about, um, that's not actually an accurate figure, 23% dip because we haven't finished the month of March yet. We've obviously got uh, at least a couple more days into it. And then we've got um, you know the long weekend, obviously, which stuffs that up because we don't tend to get much work over the long weekend. So, um, so that's probably not quite accurate. It's probably more like about a 20% drop, which is a about right. Um, every season is different, of course, but this certainly is coming into our lower time of the year. So um, coming into the lower time of the year, uh, quite often we go, okay, well, uh, work is a little bit slow, right? We, we recognise that. Well, it, that's not a bad thing. The first thing to say is, man, it's, I'm always amazed year after year when I hear stories of how much money people actually leave on the table. And it quite often comes across in splits. When a guy does a split, sells half his client base, and I say, oh, how are you going after selling that and half your client base? He said, oh, I felt it for the first week, but then after that, I didn't even notice a difference. And why that is, is because he's replaced it with additional services from his existing client base that he was just too busy to even look at or communicate. Uh, additional services, of course, are 100% um, proactive driven, maybe not 100%, but uh, customers don't normally come up to you and say, I need this done. Um, so um, it's normally you that actually has to um, tell them about it, right? So, so make sure you are doing that um, and communicating with them. The people that never feel a difference during the year are normally the guys that have got their years, their months mapped out. They know this is the low time of the year, so they just go to their additional service buffer. So you hear them say, I'm glad it's slowing down because I've got a ton of work to do for customers that I haven't got to. And what they're basically saying is that they're running a, a silo of additional work. So they find additional work, maybe communicate it to the client, maybe don't communicate it to the client, but then they call on that additional services um, list that they've got built up there and they don't even feel it. So planning, and, and then the other one probably is about this time of the year, a lot of people will take holidays at this time of the year because um, it is a lower period of time. That or January, but you know, January we have one of our biggest Januaries on on uh, record. So uh, that also you know makes the drop a little bit deeper normally. If we have a big high, I mean, we have a little bit of a steeper low as well leading into this period. So next month is going to be a little bit lower on work levels if you call on the system for work. But I'm mindful that you know, not everyone on this call does do that. But the first place, of course, to look is um, uh, in your existing client base and to do it actually methodically. So go through your client base, print it out, find an additional service literally for each one and communicate it. Because it's time to test your clients as well, yeah? To test them to see if they will take additional services off of you when you need them, which is ultimately probably one of the most important things in judging a client. 
Cool. Excellent. So, um, yeah, so this time of the year is the time for work. Of course, you know, I miss out when we talk about work, don't we? I miss out the most obvious, which Richard reminded me of the other day uh, in some of the proactives he was making. Um, uh, he said to me, you know, sometimes when, you know, it might be a bit low on work, I actually look at their work requirements and they maybe not even put down for work on the system because they just haven't done it for so long. Um so the first port of call is if you are hungry for work is to make sure you check your blackboard, make sure you update your local and your rules so you're not getting work where you don't want it as well or the type of work that you don't want. So make sure that is up to date. Um, and remember that it always takes a bit of time. You know, you've got to put the net in the water, then the fish swim into it. You don't just put the net in the water and bang, you know, they bite off the line straight away. It's more like a net, your local and your rule. So put it in, you know, uh, looking into next week. Yeah, so looking into next week, planning yeah so uh, the guys that plan really well do really well because they find the gaps about a week and a half to two weeks out and they start filling them you know from a, a week and a half out so then they don't have that gap cool so yeah enough tips there for you hopefully to go by of course you know if anything like work level stuff like that is um uh, an issue for you then um um, you know, calling us, of course, is is a good, you know, 10, 15 minute conversation that we can have with probably about five ideas for you. Cool. Um, work levels, yes. Keep an eye on them, plan in advance, look for additional services. They're the, they're the easiest load hanging fruit because they're customers that love you already. What's next? Um, I wanted to have, um, when I was thinking about um, what I was going to talk to you about today, I was thinking, okay, well, what is the most valuable thing that I can communicate to you guys? in a meeting and some of the best i suppose um, um coaching that we do tends to be with our newer guys right because we tend to have higher contact with them we call them every week for the first eight weeks uh, and we do a number of things with them in terms of provision for information um and also a bit of tracking that we do with them on hours versus income so i'm going to explain that a little bit to you so you can see what the newer guys when they come in go through because sometimes we even get the newer guys coming in and you know sometimes doing better incomes than what the the older guys do right so uh which is interesting um so what does it mean it means probably we're coaching a little bit better and setting expectations probably even maybe a little bit higher than what they were when you potentially started seven years ago ten years ago whatever it is so let's uh, have a bit of a look at what we do with them so we the first thing we do is over the first eight weeks is that we track their hours versus income. And because we're mainly trying to help them, I suppose, with their pricing and quoting, we don't include in that uh, any quoting time. We don't include in that any travel time. So we're really talking about hours on site would probably be a better way to not just say hours versus income, but it's hours uh, on site that we do, for them, do them for, right? And what we're looking for out of that and what they achieve is um, they achieve about $100 an hour. So we're not looking for 40 hours and $4,000 a week. At the end of the week, we're looking, you know, depending on where they're starting, existing client base, et cetera, or they're starting with a new one, what we're expecting to see is maybe you know, with a new one, week two, week three, we're looking at like 25 hours on site and $2,500 worth of income. So, but that hundred dollars now they hit. So, which is interesting because you know when we do some surveys, um, you know, through the whole group, there is a section of the group that probably isn't hitting a hundred dollars now on average on site. Yeah. So that means the new guys are doing better than them, right? So, and there's no reason for that because particularly given the the skill level they've got compared to what you've got, and also probably the efficiencies that you have after being in a business for five years as well. So. Do be mindful of that. It does indicate something. You know, your guys are earning $100 an hour on average on site. You know, we're not including um, those other things in there. But there's plenty of people that are, that are, that are um, uh, doing better than that, obviously, as well. Uh, you know, the things that where they tend to do better and when you're monitoring things like hours versus income, which you have to measure basically on each job you go to, and then add it up for the day, then the week, um, what you notice is you start to really notice where the income is coming from. One of the advantages that newer guys do have is that they don't have a legacy client base. So they don't have your client base there taking on and meeting more new clients, right? So that might indicate something there as well that, you know, uh, over time, um, when we get comfortable with our existing client base, we don't tend to take as many leads. And that is very true. Um, you know, I've only got to look at uh, a bit of a lead tally that I did um, uh, just since the start of the year. 
Uh, I wasn't meant to show all that stuff, was I? But anyway, there we go. Um, uh, but you can see, like a lot of the a lot of the group you know, barely take any leads since the start of the year. You know, we're down to like half the group since the start of the year has only taken eleven leads. Yeah. So what does that mean? And then the back half of the group, we've got some you know big lead takers as well, which probably gives some indication of the kind of levels you could take if you wanted to as well. You know, getting up into the hundred and fifties kind of mark. But a lot of guys up here, yeah, are they at risk of never meeting another new client and having bad, you know, not as not never getting a clean up job, never getting a new pruning job, you know, potentially, yeah. So something to think about there. That that chart, that uh, table there for you indicates a little bit about, you know, these guys, you know, it, it's it's a credit to them that they don't need very many leads, but there also is the potential to take some decent sized leads there as well, yeah, in terms of numbers. Cool. So, um, so one of the benefits that they do have new guys starting is that they're meeting clients for the first time. And I can remember t 20 years ago, we did a bit of a survey of um, uh, Jim's group did it or Moen group did it. And it was um, the regular Moes at that point, I think we're coming in at like 38, like on average 38, 50 uh, for, an, for an average regular Mo. And then for a, um, a, new, a new job, I think it came in at like... Um, on average, so big jobs, small jobs, whatever, but all new uh, was coming in at around um, $97, something like that. So you can see there's a jump even in, you know, the, the amount of income that comes from a new job compared to an old job, yeah? And that's reflective of quite often different services as well. Cool. Enough about that. But, yeah, listen, you know, I, could, I can remember talking to one of the oldest guys in gym and I was like, oh, how often do you track your hours versus income? You know, I do it twice a year, once in the off-season, off slower season, and then once in the, the really big season, you know, spring season, just to see the difference. And I try and get my pricing about in the middle for that. So you don't have to do it all the time, but hours versus income is an excellent one to do um, a couple of times a year for sure and just track things, see which customers are too low, which are too high, where your money's coming from better than other service areas, other customers, etc. Cool. Uh, lead conversion. Um, another thing we track with uh, new franchisees when they start is lead conversion. Um, I think we're going all right. Yep, good. We just beat me for some reason. Um, uh, lead conversion, um, I did have in there... Uh, 15, 30, and 60, but that doesn't add up to a thousand, uh, 100, does it, in terms of percentage? But it's, you know, we do the 15% non success factor, right? That comes in all leads, which we use to guide us in terms of customers. Maybe we don't want or they don't want us, that's fine. So 15% rejection kind of level there. 30% uh, represents um, the regular component. So we're tracking, uh, you know, their leads at the end of the month when their billing comes through. We say, what'd you get? You know, which ones you know, didn't you win? 15%, right? Which ones um, uh, did you turn to regular? And we know that coming through the call center about 20%, maybe a little bit above, uh, are regular at the time of coming through the call center of regular mo and regular gardening. So we know that that's uh, the case. And we say, well, if you, if you, after you've done the job for them, hopefully you can increase that by another half. So to 30%, so 30% conversion to regular. And that leads kind of like that analysis that we do. We only get two of them in, you know, because we only do it for eight weeks. So we only get two lots of that in uh, with them uh, in terms of uh, conversion ratios from leads received from us. Um, we see that there's a 60% once off gap. You know what I mean? That um, and some of that can be from things to do with yeah services that uh, uh, maybe it's a bit harder to then come back in four weeks to do. Uh, but they are your customers, and if they need to, they can't do stuff around the yard. You know, a phone call after four weeks is kind of like what we push on them, and say make sure you're calling them after four weeks and go hi, how are you going, my customer? Um, uh, is there anything I can help you with at all? You know what I mean? So, um, and we know that we tend, we tend to get about a 50% conversion ratio to another job, not to regular, but to another job, we get a 50% conversion ratio of those ones we call within that four week period. I think if you leave it longer, well then uh, the ratio goes down, but that doesn't matter. I mean, like for example, if you're looking for leads now, Go to, you go to your additional services, the next stop really in terms of low-hanging fruit is probably the clients you've got all the details for that you've actually paid for over the last three months and check in with them. Cool.
Uh, lead conversion, uh, when I was talking to this about with Loretta, um, and I do remember this a little bit, but uh, particularly in the early days before uh, my involvement uh, with Jerry out in the field as a franchisee, uh, Jerry used to uh, monitor religiously his uh, conversion ratio uh, from leads. As time went by, we only ever really put down the territory, so um, that was fine, but um, so there really wasn't as much need to do it. But it was like a game that he used to play with himself in terms of, you know, how many could he convert to regular. And this is a guy, of course, that did, you know, seven, you know, that eight years he did seven splits. So he was very you know, attractive to regular clients, I suppose you might as well say. And that was from just being friendly, can-do attitude, checking in with them, caring for them those kind of things. So uh, make him feel special. And I've ran through with you before a little bit about, you know, and I would have on that video again, <laughs> um, uh, talk to you about, you know, some of the things you can do because it is garden maintenance, you know, in terms of communication with the customer, it doesn't tend to be once off. And there's a whole series of, you know, uh, things that you can bring to light with the customer from everything from things growing to keeping things under control to it actually costing less if it's maintenance rather than once off. But I'll include that video so you can watch that other than me repeat it. Um, next thing I want to talk to you about uh, in terms of super valuable information that we give to guys when they first start, and that is uh, the table, uh, which we include a little bit of in, um, in the bottom of newsletters. But you can, uh, this is a table that we give them. So we, we um, email this out to them and we kind of like set them like on that, you know, uh, eight to nine week program. Uh, we give them, you know, some of the more valuable websites that we've got there, you know, which is great raising from, you know, how to handle complaints through the Jim's Jobs tutorial, obviously very important for them. Poisons page, special skills page, uh, employment page, you know, which is a very valuable one. You know, we've been talking a lot about um, employees and things like that. Uh, that employment page has a lot of things on it. We might have a look at it if we get a chance at the end. Uh, and then dumps, right? But then, you know, let's look at, say, these these weekly ones here. So, you know, week one, we've got, you know, basic diary keeping, you know, and that's really monitoring money in, money out, and uh, KPIs. Uh, KPIs is the next best one, uh, the next one over, and, and that's looking at how they use their FMS4 billing to track everything from additional services that they find at the property uh, for the customer right you know, on that billing, you know, right next to it, when the billing comes out, what's the additional service that you found for every single one of them and communicated it to them. And then obviously their conversion ratio, we're, we're getting them to do there as well. Uh, we talk about income and trajectory. So, you know, we talk about how, you know, you build a regular and obviously that regular then builds on itself in terms of, you know, every four weeks it needs doing. So we talk about the trajectory that you're going on and, you know, which is quite powerful when you see guys, you know, put on 30 regulars in their first, you know, six weeks or so. If they could continue doing that, they'd be um, doing very well um, and have very good clients because you'd have an overflow, obviously, pretty quickly. Uh, top marketing activities we've got there. Price objections, you know, handling price objections. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, we are coming into that period of time where, um, you know, uh, the guys might be putting you out um, or maybe you get some price objections. But for, for, the, for the more obvious one of like putting you off, maybe because things aren't growing at this time of the year, just remember the first thing to do to say about that is that most of the time the customer does leave it way too late. Right. So if they're if they're doing it now, remember May, it picks back up again. So if they say to you now, which is basically April, oh, don't come every four weeks, particularly if it's every four weeks to five weeks, right? They come moving outside of uh, regular servicing. Um, you have to say, oh, listen, you've actually left something like that a little bit too late. It's the first thing that I would say. I wouldn't just take it. I would say you've probably left it a little bit too late because yeah, it might be like this now, but in another five weeks' time, we're moving into the other season with rain, right? So so that's probably one of the first things I'd say to it. Also remembering that, you know, it no longer, particularly if it goes from a four-week job out to a five-week job, they are no longer a regular client considered by the system, right? But it also means that they're not a regular client in terms of their ability to be scheduled by you, et cetera, right? And I've spoken up before about how that can stuff things around, you know what I mean? You, you're not there to just be at the beck and call of people to, to move you in, move you out. You know, you've got a schedule, you're booked out for weeks in advance potentially, so it causes disruption. So if they're in a cycle, very convenient, very easy not to be um, to have too many additional prices in terms of travel, et cetera, associated with it. If they move out to non-regular, you've got more lawn that you're taking off. You don't know what you're walking into because you're no longer in control of it. So it's more labor, more time, more mess. No, it's a different priced job, right? So um, 
remember that. Uh, price objections, you know, uh, the easiest one to, to do there is if you get a price objection, the first thing to say is, but you called gyms, right? So you called someone who's 100% price, 100% uh, guaranteed. You know, if there's any problems, you've got to come back and do it. You've got a reliable person without a criminal record walking on your property. That's what you got, right? So that's what you called is, is a gym service, right? Gym's mowing service. And the other one to do where that leads off of is, you know, you, you call gyms. That's what everybody pays. And the more we can get, obviously, to that <laughs> um, and not have price discrepancies, the better. But just let that one roll straight off your tongue. That's what everyone pays. If you call gyms, that's what you pay. If you call gyms, you wanted those services or those additional things that we offer to the market. Well, then you've got to pay for it. And that's what everybody pays in the gym system. So that'd be my first, one of my first responses. Cool. Uh, getting a great star rating, we talk about, you know, complaints, advice, um, uh, recognise value and appreciate. Yeah, that's something that we don't actually do too much. You know, we don't think about too much once we get involved in the gym system is actually looking at the kind of lives we get to lead uh, as a result of having flexible time and flexible income, right? So, uh, and the, the biggest thing is, you know, listen, if, you, if you're not 100% enjoying your gym's life, then look at how you can change it. This is one of the few roles that you can be in where you've got complete control you are the boss so um look at changing it look at engaging with us if you are doing changes because we can help you as well because it's all been done before uh week nine uh green waste and feedback so you can see some things there that we've got um for the guys um talking about marketing um first place to look you know these are some of the text messages we send out i'll just do one or two of these um, if you're looking for more work, um, you know, find an additional service at every customer, then take a pick and record it uh, against that customer, yeah, so that you've sent them that and whether they say yes or no to it. Um, oh, spreading jobs, uh, tips spread bigger jobs, cool. Um, this is the one I was looking for. So a couple of super marketing activities, you know, houses, you know, we're going for low hanging fruit, right? We don't want to spend more effort to find more customers than we need to. So, you know, additional services per customer, easy. There are customers, super chance of them converting, good effort to reward ratio. Um, then we can look at, you know, people that we've already had a relationship with that met us, i.e. people over the last three months have taken leads for. Uh, and then, you know, you look at other low-hanging fruit, you've got houses selling in your area, which we can easily find on um, realestate.com. Yeah, so they've got to sign out the front. If they've got to sign out the front, you can be a welcome guest and not a pest. And that is, you know, people when they're selling their houses might be in multiple residents, may not even be living there anymore, might have moved to their next residence. So getting a mower back there is a nightmare. You've got open days, inspections, things like that. So giving them a helping hand doesn't make you a pest. Knocking on a door and saying, hi, can I sell you services? You know, it makes you a guest. So that's an easy one to do. And then look at referrals as well, yeah, because referrals tends to be very high reward if you can get one of them away because birds of a feather flock together, yeah. So cool. So that gives you a bit of an example of some of the things I suppose that we take them through. I'll have a bit of a look at our what we're doing with our, um, at the end of the newsletter, we always put some of this stuff in there, some of the more valuable websites. We'll have a look at maybe including some of these ones in there as well. Cool, guys. Excellent. Let's get back to our uh, little agenda here. Table of information. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, $100 per hour I spoke about in terms of what we track them to on site. Um, and then we've come up with a bit of a challenge for ourselves. Me and Richard um, and Loretta have come up with a bit of a challenge. In that eight weeks before we kind of like let go of them, we'd like to see them around the $3,000 a week mark. Um, which gives us a lot of confidence with them going forward, obviously with the 150K a year revenue we're talking about. So we'd like to see them at that point. Probably up until now, we really haven't um, been as concerned about what we let them off with at the end of the eight weeks. Most of them we, we, we'd have definitely up around that uh, 2,500 mark, uh, but I think we should probably get into that three grand mark or at least try to, you know, everyone runs a different business, everyone starts at different positions, but uh, that would give us a lot of confidence then for them to go forward. With that kind of like minimum you need to be basically earning, I think, in gyms, which is if you're not earning $150,000 uh, $150, a year, $3,000 a week on average, uh, I think you probably should have a look at it and see how we can make it happen, yeah? So give us a call if that is the case. Cool. Uh, minimum charge group disp uh, disparity. Okay, let's have a look. 
I cook. Now, listen, I've gone through this before, so I don't want to go through it again in any way, really. Uh, this is a survey that we did a while ago. This chart here in the middle is showing kind of like the discrepancies we have on minimum charging, yeah? So minimum charge, and we've got everything, as you can see, from right down into some of these areas here where we're getting into, like, say, the $60 mark. The average is around that $50 mark, $55 mark, sorry, somewhere around there, average-wise, yeah? Maybe a little bit lower, right? But I suppose what we're doing is, you know, depending, you know, if surveys, you know, they're always open to interpretation. What is a minimum charge? Some people would say, I don't even have a minimum charge, Shane. Uh, but I kind of like think you should have something in your head to make sure that um, uh, you are, you know, earning what you are worth and it does cost you a bit to get out there, cost you a lead fee if that's the case, but also cost you petrol and time even more uh, importantly and consulting with the customer as well for the first time and starting that relationship starting the book work right as well you know putting their name in putting their address in putting them in your schedule there's something associated with that right so having some form of minimum charge i think probably is important and it'd be great if we could all get around the same mark but as i said this was open to interpretation a couple of those guys i saw on the lower level i was like oh well, i know you're earning really good money and yet you're, you're down at 40 dollars an hour for your minimum charge so it's open to interpretation. What are we talking about? A verge? Who knows? So, but that does give a bit of an indication. If you did, if you, when I'm saying these words and you're going like I'm around the 45 and below mark for um, minimum charge, yeah, it may be worth having a, having a talk to us so that we can give you some legs of support, yeah, of uh, what other people are charging. Remembering, new guys, we just tell them you, got, you should be averaging out about $150, uh, sorry, $100 an hour uh, on site and they, seem to hit it right so it's sometimes it's the expectations you set as well in your head as well you know after all these years have you really adapted your pricing up to where we're at now or have you got something locked in from five years ago or ten years ago when you when you were doing your pricing and you've never really taken it up remembering we've got a ton of cpi so if we're going to have people having problems with pricing because they charge too little this is the era we're going to have it in because CPI is, you know, um, has been quite extraordinary over these last two years. So you've got to come up. Otherwise, you may not feel it in your first year after this big CPI rise. So you might last another year or two. But, you know, about year three, I think you're probably going to start really feeling it. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, next one. Uh, employee. With, uh, oh, that's employment. Uh, uh, Web page. So that was actually talking about. We do have a web page for uh, information relating to employee employing people. Uh, that was one of those web pages there. That it, it is at the bottom of your um, newsletter as well. I'll check that, but I'm pretty sure it, it is there. Uh, it is one of the most important web pages simply because you know it, the first thing it gives you right off the the bat is it gives you a list of other people that employ people, other franchisees that employ people. So if you want advice about you know, employing for someone for the first time, these guys will be very helpful to you because of the, they tend to be. <laughs> um, and also, you know, where they got it from and stuff like that, where they got the employee from. And, you know, they've normally got a tip for you or someone within the organisation that can help you out, yeah? So um, have a look at that page. The best thing you can do is do a little bit of research if you are considering it. I've done a talk before on the benefits of having an employee, whether it be through being able to do bigger jobs or being have holidays yourself and still have money coming in or what happens if you get sick. It does give a lot of strength to your business. The one risk, of course, that people that employ one person should be particularly careful of is if they lose that employee. Yeah, So that can mean something to people. And I've actually had people leave the business because they've lost the employee and just didn't know how they were going to cope with it. Um, so that, that is a risk. If you employ someone, you know, what happens if you lose that person? Maybe a little bit of a backup plan there for yourself can be valuable. Cool. Um, now, uh, Facebook, uh, uh, Facebook rules. Okay, yes, cool. Uh, Facebook rules, yes, we've talked about this a little bit. One of the, the, the best things you can do long-term, simple for your business is to run your personal page only. Um, to document the things that you do in your work, right? So it goes out to friends and family, uh, you know, look at what a great hedge I've done right through to, you know, look at this cleanup job before and after shots to, you know, look at my new piece of equipment to whatever, right? So, um, but using this powerful tool, which is a very powerful tool, there's a few things you have to be aware of. So I will just mention this because it sometimes does come up as it has this month. Um, and you've got to be careful with it because ultimately, under the gym system, you cannot solicit work in someone else's territory, right? So what does that mean? Well, on Facebook, you potentially can do that. 
if you're if you're actually soliciting work. So that's the main word to watch out for: is solicitation of work. If you're doing anything on your Facebook page, you can you cannot say, "I'd like I would like more work like this." That's asking for work. Can't say, "I work on the in this area." Right, so just be mindful of that word solicitation of work, which is asking for work. As long as you don't ask for work and you're documenting what you're doing, then it serves a purpose of communicating that to your uh, friends, family, and associates through the social network. No problems, just watch out if you're asking for work or a particular service or in a particular area. Yeah, you definitely cannot have your your business, Jim's Mine, whatever suburb you are, Facebook page. Definitely can't do that, right. So if you do see something like that as well, which came up this month with me, and the guy was like, oh, I don't want to be a dibber dollar. You're not being a dibber dollar. You are actually stopping someone from doing something they're probably unaware of. Uh, hopefully there's no one out there doing this, but um, and that is breaking the contract, right? And then the longer it is up for, you know, the longer before we, we find it, the, the more damage that could potentially be done and consequences, of course, as well. So so um, be careful if you're doing it, but it is a fantastic tool and I highly recommend you using it. Uh, just, you know, um, click your brain, you know, know what you're doing and don't solicit work um, on Facebook. Cool, okay, excellent. Um, next one was... Um, uh, can you red flag customers? Oh, well, you can red flag customers. Okay, let me just uh, see if I can find something while I'm doing this. Uh, guys, where are you? It's weird when you don't, when you can't find it, right? I don't know where you sent it to me. Um, Okay, uh, yes, you can. So you can red flag customers, yes, and we encourage you to do so. So that could be everything from particularly like payments. So if you're having problems with payments with a client, let's make sure that we red flag them. Uh, if they are not all there, great, let's red flag them. Let's not have them getting passed on to anyone else. Um, and it also stops them probably from getting work within the gym system for any division. Because if I red flag it and say, I normally say, you know, non non payer. Uh, not to be sent to any gyms by South Australian franchisee. So if you do have a customer like that, it's not all one way with customers where, you know, it's um, they can send us, <laughs> um, uh, you know, one stars or whatever. We can red flag them as well, yeah, if they are problem children. So that gives you a little bit of uh, comfort normally as well. Uh, that there is something that we can do to if, if you're not being treated correctly by a customer. Cool. Uh, what I was looking for is barley. Um, now, um, we have I've organised with a, another franchisor uh, to have a barley conference for us if you want to go. Now, what, what is it all about? Uh, I must admit, he started organising. I went, oh, it sounds like a fantastic idea. Uh, I haven't got it here to put up on the screen, but I'll make sure that we send it out to you. Um, but it's on the. It's coming up in July 22nd to 24th, right? Uh, you can stay wherever you want. It's still early days. We're still working it out, but you can stay wherever you want, but 22nd to 24th. Uh, it's more about being able to um, use it as a, as, a, as a tax expense in your business, yeah? Uh, you're invited, your wife's invited, your kids are invited. We will have a, a wife and kids night, dinner uh, as well, so that we can bring them all in. So if you are looking for a way to reward yourself, um, uh, where I'm going there, <laughs> other franchisors are going there, other franchisees from around Australia are going there as well. Uh, we're not pushing it like as in it's got to be something uh, super fantastic. It's more about your ability to be able to come there, talk to like-minded individuals that want to talk about their business for a couple of days, uh, and then obviously tag on some kind of holiday for themselves as well. So I think it's a great idea. I, I'm going to jump at it. Um, now, fr from that base, you know, you won't be able to help a group of franchisors when they get together that uh, we probably will be presenting a few things, you know, over that course of those days. Uh, but we also recognise every time I've been to a conference, quite often the best place to um, extract ideas from people is after a couple of beers. Not after 10, <laughs> but after a couple, right? So it will be a, a work function. So we'll be on our on our best behaviour um, in those two days. Um, but, um, yeah, so we should we should be able to have a bit of fun uh, in Bali. And uh, I'll put this up on the screen because this, we'll, um, this is what we will be uh, sending out with the video as well. So this is in July 2024, yeah. And it is 
at the Novotel. So the, the Novotel is where the uh, where we're going to get together. We'll probably get a room there and you know um, present some things up on the screen, etc. Um, but uh, yes, and have a bit of, have have a bit of a fun around fun around there as well. But you can stay obviously wherever wherever you want. Um, you just got to get there, you know, at a reasonable time so that we can kick off. So that's that's um, a bit of fun for all of us, and we'll put that in the newsletter. Uh, if you are interested in coming to that. Great. Don't be too concerned if you miss out this year. I think with the legs that this is getting from everyone, franchisors and franchisees, I think you'll probably find that um, we'll probably do it annually. Yeah. So that should be a bit of fun. Cool. Uh, now, uh, we have a couple of guys that are um, uh, looking for a bit of work out there as well. So if you are a gym that doesn't do hedges anymore or gets a clean-up job that's just too big for you, we do have a couple of young, strong fellas out there around the place that are looking for a little bit of work. So if that is the case, uh, uh, give us a call and we can um, uh, put, you, put you in contact with them. Cool. Um, excellent. Uh, Roger, uh, you know that Richard makes proactives for us. Um, just recently we had Roger do a few, do just a little bit of a uh, half-day guest um, proactive speaker maker whatever um but that proved uh, pretty good and it was we had a bit of a buzz me richard and uh, roger uh, doing that as a bit of a group that day so we'll probably do that again i think we're down for the for the ninth to have a bit of a day of doing that as a team again so yes yeah, so and roger maybe uh, if you get a call from uh, roger it'll be on our number anyway but if you do get a call from roger yeah listen he's just uh, making some proactives for you he's not some weirdo franchisee calling you up right so he's he wants to have a chat to you I think he does bring a bit of a different element to it, as we all do. So, um, yeah, feel free to have a chat to him. He's certainly run um, a decent-sized business and has been pretty switched on uh, in some of the areas of business that, that franchisees naturally aren't, which tends to be like book work and processes and employees and stuff like that. So it's quite good there. So so if you do manage to get a, a, a chat with Roger, have a chat to him about, you know, his pricing structures, you know, he's all over that, um, right through to, you know, how you know, putting on an employee and, you know, uh, running a van. He runs a van as well. So um, without a trailer, I think, with his employee. So lots to talk to Roger about. If you did want to actually have a book him for a, um, a proactive with Roger, uh, you probably could just send me a text message and we'll put uh, we'll start putting together a bit of a Roger list. Uh, probably could do the same with uh, Richard and me as well, Loretta. But yeah, he's our new guy, uh, doing a bit of guest speaking. We'll see how he goes with it. Uh, national online meeting. You know, so I spoke a little bit about that before. Um, I just thought it was pretty good. Um, I was worried that it was going to end up like a bit of a free-for-all, which is... Um, uh, can be uh, sometimes how franchise all meetings go, uh, but it wasn't. Um, and um, they just had a few little guest speakers talking in there as well. And most of the content was pretty good. Um, yeah, they were mainly talking about how to get additional work. They probably missed a few things, but I think overall it was it was valuable and it was worth listening to and it was reasonably concise. So in terms of not wasting your time. Cool, cool, cool. Excellent. Um, Beautiful. Uh, just for you guys on the meeting as well, uh, we'll be sending out a, uh, an email about this, uh, but we are doing a little bit of a fundraiser uh, for Richard. Um, Richard's um, son um, uh, has uh, terminal uh, brain cancer. Uh, so as you know, we did do a, a bit of a Saturn note to probably end our little chat on. Uh, but uh, as you know, we did do something like this for Dave Norwood before, and, you know, um, it was excellent demonstration of you know the kindness within the group um so yeah we'll be sending out a little bit of an, an email about that so keep your eyes out for that uh, if you do want any more information you can certainly uh have a chat to us about it as well but um yeah so um not not a very nice situation you know probably the worst of all worst things that we could probably ever think happening to anyone right so um so our ability to come together as a bit of a team and um show our support no matter how small it is you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, I think it's really powerful for us to be able to do. Cool. Excellent, guys. So let me have a look what I've got in the chat. Oh, no one wants to talk to me. It's all, it's all me talking, isn't it? Uh, if, we, if, we, if we could chat with other gyms, yes, like in a normal meeting. Yes, yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, but the problem is that turns into obviously a bit of a free-for-all. And then what we tend to find is when people do um, talk 
uh, in the meetings, we just see everyone drop off, right? So we've managed to hold 46 participants. When we've done things like that before and people have um, talked to other franchisees you know, or talked about what they want to talk about in the meeting, what you tend to find is you tend to find each time that happens, about 10 drop off until we get down to about 20. So I do want to keep this concise. If you do want to uh, have a topic talked about or have a discussion, yeah, listen, by all means, uh, let's put it up for discussion. We can certainly have um, you know a few guest speakers kind of thing as we go through this. Um, I think that's probably a good idea. There's some good information out there, people doing some really smart things. So if you are one of those people and you would like to, you know, present something for five, ten minutes, uh, no problems at all. We can certainly do that. Um, the other thing is uh, with meetings, yeah, we, we do uh, obviously uh, going on these online meetings and then being quite successful. Um, and, and it's fair to say, you know, I wasn't really a big fan of online meetings to start with, uh, but uh, it has kind of changed my mind, being you know, national kind of like indicating that that's the way we have to go in, in terms of accessibility for everyone. Um, I must admit it has turned out to be very successful and, you know, you, the numbers don't lie, right? So uh, we've got 46 uh, participants on here. We had 60 before a uh, uh, previous meeting. Uh, probably, you know, when we go to those local meetings, we're probably getting 25 to 30, maybe 35, some of the, some of the better ones, right? So, so we don't want to cut them out completely. So we'll still do a round of um, local meetings. And I think before we do that, we'll probably do one big meeting around that kind of like feather and uh, area we have had trouble with that evident location um because we're really trying to keep it open for social events and not business related ones but we are sourcing another location for that so we'll probably have news of that i'd say within the next couple of weeks of a big meeting coming up um, which we can all attend excellent guys um well listen i I always like to keep it uh, nice and short, and oh, there you go. I'm just on that uh, 50 minutes. Um, so, listen, thank you all for your attention. I hope you got something out of this. If you do have any questions about anything we've discussed here, please do uh, give us a call. The main thing to do is if you are feeling like you are underpricing things, engage with us, yeah? We want to make sure that we, we got you confidently earning good money through a period of high inflation as well. And remember, it, it's the young guys that are doing it. So we all forget. We don't get trained again. We five, ten years later in our business, now maybe is the time to do a little bit of analysis, go back to the basics and really start getting, earn some of the money that these new guys coming in are doing. And, of course, you know, we have guys doing $1,000 days for their first time, you know, let alone $3,000 a week, so, um, you know, and making great money. So and part of that is what we ran through, which is, you know, put yourself back on for leads, re-engaging with your business, you know, looking at your pricing dollar per minute on site and doing keeping a bit of a record of that for a month. Got a bit of extra time? Now's the time to do it, yeah? Now, uh, one other thing before I go, just one other final tip, and that is your one percenters um, uh, is a good, whenever the workload goes down, is a great time to do your one percenters. One percenters are like things that make customers love you that are not, not on the service book, so to speak. And they can be anything from pulling a few weeds in the garden, spraying the weeds in the driveway as you're leaving. Uh, but make sure you do write it on the invoice pad, let them know that, you know, bringing in the bins, whatever it may be, just those little one percenters that you can see to do for your customers because, of course, normally, um, you know, in, in in April we're doing those things. It's only probably two months later before price rises come, right? So, you know, grease the palm of the hand or whatever it is and, you know, they give, them, give them a one percent so they love you even more and see that it's not all about money and then, you know, two months later, bang, you're raising their prices. So... Cool, guys. Excellent. Thanks for your attendance. I know I want you to get back to your families and enjoy it. If you've got any questions, give us a buzz. Uh, yeah, and we'll get those dates out for you for the uh, the Bali, Bali one uh, later in the year, but uh, even more importantly, uh, the big meeting as well, so we can have a bit of a chat. Okay, guys. Sayonara. <laughs> Bye.